morning again and happy Sabbath. <clears throat> um, my subject this morning, the changed signpost. I don't know if you've ever been traveling anywhere and somebody tore down a signpost and you were looking for a road and couldn't find it or had it turned a little bit and you're not quite sure which way am I supposed to go here. A signpost was erected by God for those journeying through this world. One arm of the signpost pointed out willing obedience to the Creator as the road to happiness and life. The other arm indicated disobedience as the path to misery and death. The way to happiness was as clearly defined as was the way to the city of refuge under the Jewish dispensation. But in an evil hour for humanity, the great enemy of all good turned the signpost around and multitudes have mistakenly taken the wrong way. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, as we look into your word this morning, we ask for more than human understanding and a willingness to follow your ways, to do that which is right in your sight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My text this morning came from chapter 31 of the book of Exodus, and now probably be most of the time in that chapter, uh, starting there in verse 13. Through Moses, the Lord instructed the Israelites... Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Sounds pretty strong, doesn't it? For whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. In these words... The Lord clearly defined obedience as the way to the city of God. But the man of sin has changed the signpost, making it point in the wrong direction. He set up a false Sabbath and has caused men and women to think that by resting on it, they were obeying the command of the Creator. I can remember growing up in a family that most of attended a first day keeping church. You know, we, we just didn't know any better. We got up and we went to church on Sunday and Granddad sat out on the porch and read his Bible Sunday afternoon. He never did do any work. I mean, kind of like uh, keeping the Sabbath, but it wasn't the Sabbath. God has declared that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. When the heavens and the earth were finished, uh, He exalted this day as a memorial of His creative work. Resting on the seventh day from all His work which He had made, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. That's the one thing He didn't do for any other day. At the time of the exodus from Egypt, the Sabbath institution was brought prominently before the people of God. While they were still in bondage, their taskmasters had attempted to force them to labor on Sabbath by increasing the amount of work required each week. Again and again, the conditions of labor had been made harder and more exacting. But the Israelites were delivered from bondage and brought to a place where they might observe unmolested all the precepts of Jehovah. At Sinai, the law was spoken, and a copy of it on two tables of stone 
written with the finger of God was delivered to Moses. And through nearly 40 years of wandering, the Israelites were constantly reminded of God's appointed rest day by the withholding of the manna every seventh day and also by the miraculous preservation of a double portion that fell on the preparation day. Before entering the promised land, the Israelites were admonished by Moses to keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it in Deuteronomy 5.12. The Lord designed that by a faithful observance of the Sabbath command, Israel should continually be reminded of their accountability to Him as their Creator and their Redeemer. While they should keep the Sabbath in the proper spirit, idolatry could not exist. But should the claims of this precept of the Decalogue be set aside as no longer binding, then the Creator would be forgotten. And men would worship other gods. Do we see that now? Oh, yes. God says, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. Yet, he says, they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. And in his appeal to them to, de to return to him, he called their attention anew to the importance of keeping the Sabbath holy. I am the Lord your God, he said. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and hallow my Sabbaths and, you sh and they shall be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord your God. We find those words in Ezekiel chapter 20. And in Ezekiel chapter 22, in calling the attention of Judah to the sins that finally brought upon them the Babylonian captivity, the Lord declared, Thou hast profaned my Sabbaths. Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads. Over and over and over, the Lord's had to bring His people back. Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 18. At the rest, restoration of Jerusalem in the days of Nehemiah, Sabbath breaking was met with this stern inquiry. Did not your fathers thus and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet he bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. Christ during his earthly ministry emphasized the binding claims of the Sabbath. In all his teaching he showed reverence for the institution he himself had given. In his days, the Sabbath had become so perverted that its observance reflected the character of selfish and arbitrary men rather than the character of God. Christ set aside the false teaching by which those who claimed to know God had misrepresented him. Although followed with merciless hostility by the rabbis, he did not even appear to conform to their requirements, but went straight forward, keeping the Sabbath according to the law of God. In unmistakable language, he testified to his regard for the law of Jehovah. Think not, he said, that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, he said. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, and we still got them. They might be a little raggedy around the edges, but they're here. 
one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. During the Christian dispensation, the great enemy of God's and man's happiness has made the Sabbath of the fourth commandment an object of special attack. And I found this interesting uh, quotation in Prophets and Kings, page 183. It says, And here speaking is Satan. Uh, I will work at cross purposes with God. I will empower my followers to set aside God's memorial, the seventh day Sabbath. Thus, I will show the world that the day sanctified and blessed by God has been changed. That day shall not live in the minds of the people. I will obliterate it from the memory of it. I will place in its stead a day that does not bear the credentials of God, a day that cannot be assigned between God and His people. I will lead those who accept this day to place upon it the sanctity that God placed upon the seventh day. Through my vicegerent, I will exalt myself. The first day will be extolled and the Protestant world will receive this spurious Sabbath as genuine. Through the non-observance of the Sabbath that God instituted, I will bring His law into contempt. The words, a sign between me and you throughout your generations, I will make to serve on the side of my Sabbath. Thus the world will become mine. I will be the ruler of this earth, the prince of the world. I will so control the minds under my power that God's Sabbath shall be a special object of contempt, a sign. <laughs> I will make the observance of the seventh day a sign of disloyalty to the authorities of earth. Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will dare not to observe the seventh day of Sabbath for fear of wanting food and clothing. They will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. That's an interesting conversation. Kind of reminds me of uh, Revelation chapter 13, chapter, verses 16 and 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name or the number of the beast. If we have a hard time keeping the Sabbath now, while we can sit here peacefully, how are we going to do when we can't buy and sell? Or later on when there's a price tag on your head, uh, Through, setting, through the setting up of a false Sabbath, the enemy has thought to change times and laws. But has he really succeeded in changing God's law? Of course not. The words in the 31st chapter of Exodus give the answer. He who's the same yesterday, today, and forever is declared of the seventh day Sabbath. It is a sign between me and you. Throughout your generation, it's a sign forever. The changed signpost is pointing the wrong way, but God has not changed. He is still the mighty God of Israel. Behold, the nation, nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as small as the dust on the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. 
Lebanon is not sufficient to be burned or the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are accounted to him less than nothing in vanity. But how is that law disregarded? Look around you. The world today is in open rebellion against God. This is in truth a froward generation filled with ingratitude and formalism, insincerity, pride, apostasy, you name it. The list goes on and on and on. Men neglect the Bible and hate the truth. Jesus sees his law rejected, his love despised, his ambassadors treated with indifference, Yet he has spoken by his mercies, but these have been unacknowledged. He's spoken by warnings, but these have been unheeded. The sole temple of human beings has been turned into a place of unholy traffic. Selfishness, envy, pride, malice, all cherished. Many do not hesitate to sneer at the Word of God. Those who believe that Word, just as it reads, are held up to ridicule. There is a growing contempt for law and order. We see that all around us in our dear old United States, don't we? And it's directly traceable to a violation of the plain commands of Jehovah. Violence and crime or the result of turning aside from the path of obedience. Behold the wretchedness and misery of multitudes who worship at the shrine of idols and who seek in vain to, for happiness and peace. Behold the well-nigh universal disregard of the Sabbath commandment. Behold also the daring impiety of those who dare to enact laws to safeguard the supposed sanctity of the first day of the week. At the same time, these same people making laws to legalize drugs and encourage the liquor traffic. Wise above that which is written, they attempt to coerce the consciences of men. Are we seeing that today? While lending their sanction to an evil that brutalizes and destroys the beings created in the image of God. It is Satan himself who inspires such legislation. He well knows that the curse of God will rest on those who exalt human enactments above the divine. And he does all in his power to lead men into the broad way that leads to destruction. His great desire is to cast as many people as possible into eternity unprepared. So long have men worshipped human opinions and human institutions that almost the whole world is following after idols. He who has endeavored to change God's law is using every deceptive artifice to induce men and women to array themselves against God and against the sign by which the righteous are known. But the Lord will not always suffer His law to be broken and despised with impunity. There is a time coming when the lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For we must appear, all of us, before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Skepticism may treat the claims of God's law with jest, scoffing, denial. The spirit of worldliness may contaminate the many and control the few, the cause of God may hold its ground only by great exertion and continual sacrifice, yet in the end, the 
truth will triumph gloriously. We're on the winning side. The closing work of God in the earth, the standard of His law, will again be exalted. False religion may prevail. Iniquity may abound. The love of many may wax cold. The cross of Calvary may be lost sight of. And darkness like the pall of death may spread over the world. The whole force of the popular current may be turned against the truth. Plot after plot may be formed to overthrow the people of God, but in the hour of greatest peril, the God of Elijah <laughs> will raise up human instrumentalities to bear a message that will not be silenced in the populous cities of the land and in the places where men have gone to the greatest lengths in speaking against the Most High, the voice of stern rebuke will be heard. Boldly will men of God's appointment denounce the union of the church with the world. Earnestly will they call upon men and women to turn from the observance of a man-made institution to the observance of the true Sabbath. Our, the first of the three angels' messages Fear God and give glory to Him. They'll proclaim that to every nation. For the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. God will not break His covenant, nor alter the thing that has gone out of His lips. His word will stand forever, fast, as unalterable as His throne. Yes. At the judgment, this covenant will be brought forth, plainly written with the finger of God, and the world will be arraigned before the bar of infinite justice to receive sentence. Today... As in the days of Elijah, the line of demarcation between God's commandment-keeping people and the worshipers of false gods is clearly drawn. Remember the words of Elijah there on Mount Carmel. How long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow Him. If Baal, then follow Him. And the message for today Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partaker of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. The time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. The observance of the false Sabbath will be urged upon us. The contest will be between the commandments of God and the commandments of men. Those who have yielded step by step to worldly demands and conformed to worldly customs will then yield to the powers that be rather than subject themselves to derision and insult and threatened imprisonment and finally death. At that time, the gold will be separated from the dross. True godliness will be clearly distinguished from the appearance and the tinsel of it. And here's a quotation from Prophets and Kings that I've uh, studied it over the years, and I've found that it refers a lot to m much of our ministry. She says, many a star that we have admired for its brilliance will then go out in darkness. That's a fearful, that's a fearful thing. How do, you, how do you walk with God? How do you walk in His commandments and then decide to go with the enemy?
Those who have assumed the ornaments of the sanctuary but are not clothed with Christ's righteousness will then appear in the shame of their own nakedness. Among earth's inhabitants scattered in every land, there are those who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Like the stars of heaven which appear only at night, these faithful ones will shine forth when darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people. In Africa, in the Catholic lands of Europe and South America, in China, in India, in the islands of the sea, and in all the dark corners of the earth, God has reserved a remnant of chosen ones that will yet shine forth amid the darkness, revealing clearly to an apostate world the transforming power of obedience to His law. Even now, they're appearing in every nation, among every tongue and people, and in the hour of deepest apostasy, when Satan's supreme effort is made to cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive, under penalty of death, the sign of allegiance to a false rest day, these faithful ones, blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, will shine as lights in the world. The darker the night, the more brilliantly they shine. Remember Elijah in number in Israel at the time when God's judgments were falling upon the backsliding people? He could count only one on the Lord's side. But when he said, I, even I, am only, only am left, and they seek my life, the word of the Lord surprised him. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed to Baal. Although the signpost has been turned, we have an unfailing roadmap which will guide us on the narrow way that leads home. And let every one of us have a heart of flesh, a heart of tender sympathy, a heart that like the heart of Christ reaches out for the salvation of a lost world. There's a lot of people that need to know the truth that we know. The way will be more difficult in the days ahead, but hold on. It's those who endure to the end that the promise of salvation is made. Let's pray.